Welcome back to Wall Street Week. This week, President-elect Donald Trump chose former Wall Streeter Steve Mnuchin as the nominee for Treasury Secretary and billionaire businessman Wilbur Ross as the Commerce Secretary nominee. Quite a team. Uh, and some in the media have been very critical that uh, too many people in the Trump cabinet are just too wealthy, <laughs> including this headline. Check it out from uh, Politico here. Trump's team of gazillionaires. Gazillionaires and from Vanity Fair, the big problem with Trump's billionaire filled cabinet. All right, we are back right now with Joe Fami and Tobias Lefkovich. Uh, all right, what's, what's wrong with having a lot of money? I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I think it's great that he has successful businessmen rather than lifelong politicians in his cabinet. Right, but He's, the media he, is finding a big problem with this. Well, they, the they somehow the think that you know, you know, drain the swamp <laughs> and you're suddenly putting in the billionaires that may have a Wall Street and big corporations interest at heart. That's their, that's their take on it. Sure. What are they missing, Joe? I think they're missing that real life experience is much better than lifelong politicians and and Steve Mnuchin talked about GDP growth I, when they're talking now they they have everything planned out I actually like that they really have a concrete plan in place he talked about GDP growth moving to three to four percent I think four is a little aggressive if we're running at two now but even running from two to three moves the needle over let's say a year or two can move the needle tremendously uh, with earnings and with the entire economy Tobias I, I argued this week that Mnuchin having been a, 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 a trader on Wall Street, having run the uh, mortgage operations, the mortgage backed desk at Goldman Sachs, that's a real positive, right? Because he understands how the capital markets work. And if we're going to get this kind of growth that Trish was talking about, we're going to need the capital markets to function in a much more fluid way than they have over the last eight years, right? So let's put it this way. I think one of the concerns that I had a few years ago when George W. Bush was president was some of the Treasury Secretary picks didn't have Wall Street experience. They didn't understand markets in the same way. They were very, very good industrialists. But thank God you had Hank Paulson when the crisis hit mm -hmm. because you wanted somebody who did understand it. So having Wall Streeters in the Treasury area, I know there's some people who don't like that philosophically. But you need people with knowledge and experience in markets to address problems that might occur in markets. Otherwise, you're, you're doing stuff straight out of the academic classes. Look, I, I will tell you, I have to put full disclosure, I'm Canadian. I didn't vote for anybody in this election. <laughs> um, so um, I'm not even allowed to vote in Canada, but that's another issue. But the, the, the concept of um, having thoughtful people who've been there, seen crises, who've been able to react to them, those are positives, irrespective of how much money they have. Isn't it also amazing, though, that for the first time you actually have a real businessman, a, an entrepreneur in the White House, and, and you saw what happened, of course, this week with Carrier and uh, his, his willingness his uh, his ability to get something done on that front, and I, you know, I know he didn't save every job, but you're talking about saving 800 jobs there in Indianapolis, and that's a big deal. That's a big deal for well, people that are there. It's a big we, deal for sentiment. We all understand that, and most of the viewers who are investors, long-term investors, understand that. The people at Vanity Fair, unfortunately, they don't understand that. So. Don't, don't lose any sleep over the fact that Vanity Fair doesn't like the fact that there's business people in this administration. This is really, if we're going to get the economic growth, we're going to need people who understand the markets. We and really we're going to need people who understand what it's like to be faced with all that red tape, yep. all that regulation. Sure. I mean, Donald it's Trump has experienced that himself. Yeah, that's I wanted to ask you, Tobias, the, uh, assuming that we, we talked about financials, but there's going to be major other areas of the economy that's going to see the regulatory hurdles taken off. So where should you be thinking about investing as a result of that? So one of the things that and I just I want to touch on both the tax policy and the regulatory policy of lowering both of them. Small businessmen, if you look at the NFIB surveys, what are the two things they're most worried about has been taxation and regulation. Take the government off their backs. They're going to be willing to go out and hire. They're going to be willing to go out and spend some money developing their businesses. So one of the other proposals has been the 100% first year depreciation write off of, ca of a capital investment uh, that won't be subject to losing the deduction for a lower tax rate. Um, I think that's very you know, in, 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 how should I call it, uh, exciting for a small business person saying, I can go out and buy this $100,000 piece of equipment, a farmer buy a new tractor, um, and, uh, you know, a, a construction contractor buying a new machine, and getting really excited. So there's going to be some investment increment in the in capital goods because of that. Now, I'd be careful. I think some of the hype around the infrastructure story has taken these stocks too far. Joe, you made a big call uh, calling for Dow 20,000 yeah. uh, at a time when 
I think a lot of people are uh, actually, you know, ridiculing you for how could you yeah. make that call. Right. So we've got uh, we've got about uh, 28 days left in, yeah. in the month. Are we going to get that down 20,000? I think we get there by year end. And, and the point of the call, I made it back in April when the Dow was 17.5. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the point of the call, if we get to 19.5, 19.8, the point of the call is we're going higher. I made the call for five reasons, technicals, fundamentals. Uh, sentiment was one. Uh, the Fed, the low interest rate policy, and a new uh, administration. And I think the big factor in which you alluded to is the sentiment shift that's happened in the market. Because I was at the SALT conference in Las Vegas in May, and I, the people who I highly respect were incredibly negative. That is true. I wanted to jump into Lake Bellagio. So <laughs> I was so depressed. I was so depressed when I hear everyone, one after another, negative on the market. And the market tends to fool the majority. Meaning, uh, I want to know what everyone else is thinking. Not only professionals, but a lot of high net worths and retail people I speak to were, wanted nothing to do with this market. So the market tends to do the opposite of what Ooh, everyone well, thinks. Well, but, but now you're scaring me because everybody's suddenly positive. Yeah. Should we be okay. rethinking it? Short term, I, I agree with point. Tobias that the, the market's got a little bit ahead of itself <laughs> and sentiment has shifted. But it's all going to get corrected in 20 days. <laughs> and it's going to run away from there. No, but it, hey, 20,000, we hope we see it there. Uh, Great to see both of you, Joe and Tobias. Thank you well, so thank much. Thank you for having me. Thank you. All right, we're going to take a quick break and we'll be right back.